Hello everyone, my name is Quad and welcome to an updated video that will tell you everything about mining. How to start, how to get the rarest materials and how to lose your mind in the end due to not getting enough of rare minerals. Mining is a mechanic in Warframe that may not be the most fun and engaging, but it has to be done at some point or another. To start your mining journey, you will first need a Sunpoint drill or a Nosum cutter. You can get the Sunpoint drill from Smokefinger for 2500 standing at rank 0 with the Solaris United, so right at the beginning of the game pretty much. Besides that, the Sunpoint drill is the best drill in the game since it will mine all the rare gems you can find in every open world, so you will basically skip the whole progression of the other types of drills. The other type of drills are Nosum cutters you can get from Old Man Sumbat at Cetus. You can buy the first one for 500 standing at rank 0 with the Ostrons, which is very cheap, but if you really want to progress fast, skip this one for now and stick with the Sunpoint Drill. Besides the first Nosum Cutter, there are two more versions of it, Focused and Advanced. As I will say numerous more times, all Nosum Cutters can be skipped, but they do have their uses, which I will mention at the end of the video. Before you can mine, you need to equip your drill, which you can do in your arsenal. Go to the gear menu on top, the circle, then gear and here you need to choose your drill or cutter. And now we can finally go outside in the open world and touch grass. When you get outside, you will have to equip your drill. You will see the number of veins nearby on the left and your distance from them on the right. So now you have to find the veins. The Sunpoint Drill and Advanced Nosum Cutter will show you the veins on your minimap, but the other two cheaper Nosum Cutter drills will not. What you're looking for now are two types of veins on each open world. The first type are ores and the second type are gems. The color varies depending on the open world, which I will go over later. The veins can be found everywhere, but the best place to farm resources are definitely caves. For now, let's try to find veins and mine it so you can see the absolute basics. When you find a vein, you need to point at it. You should then see one, two or three blue dots, which you need to shoot and hold. You now need to try and hit the center of the bracket that is somewhere on the circle. And when you're done, you will get some material. Sometimes you will see two brackets, one being really slim. I suggest hitting that one because it will give you an additional resource so you get two minerals or double of one. What I should mention here as well is that when you have an active double resource drop chance booster, you will find more gem veins and more of those slim brackets. It is also very important to note that you can have the double resource booster active, which will give you two times more resources. And you can even double that with the Smita Kavats charm ability. But that is pretty much it how you can double the resources you get or get even more. But let's go back a bit. As I said before, each cutter or a drill varies in stability, speed of mining and radar range of the nearby veins. Stability of the normal and focused Nosum cutter is... bad. But the advanced Nosum cutter and the Sunpoint drill are super stable. Again, I really recommend getting the Sunpoint drill straight off because it is the best in all regards and you can get it during the first few hours of Warframe, so why not? Besides that, you can also upgrade the Sunpoint Drill with two widgets, one that will increase the range you can mine at, and the second one making you completely silent so the enemies won't hear you. You can buy them from Smokefinger for 30,000 standing each, and they will be installed automatically. But with this, I think I bored you enough with the basics. Let's now look at where we can find the ores and gems. I'll be using a Sunpoint Drill and we'll go over each of the open worlds one by one, starting with the Plains of Eidolon. On the Plains of Eidolon, your gemstone dealer is Old Man Sumbat. Outside on the plains, you may find two types of veins. Ores are colored red and gems are colored blue. Everything still works the same, come to the vein and mine it, that's it. Ores, the red veins, may give you Coprune and Pyrol as common, Pharos as uncommon and Auron as rare. Auron is super rare, so be very patient with it. Gems on the other hand are colored blue. They may give you Azerite, Veridos and Devar as common, Crimson as uncommon and Centurum or Nith as rare. As I said before, the best places to find the veins of ores and gems are caves. 
When it comes to the Plains of Adelon, the cave at Two Horns is packed full of veins. Go there, mine everything, go back to Cetus and repeat. You may also venture to Air Pariah's Vigil, which is packed full of the blue stuff. You should get lots of shiny rocks there. Also, at this point I think I should say that I am very sorry if I mispronounce some of the names of places or gemstones. And now let's continue to the Orb Valis. The vein types are the same, red for ores and blue for gems, as the Plains of Eidolon. Ores consist of Axidite and Travarite, which are common, Veneral as uncommon and Hesperon as rare, which will get you in a hassle, believe me. Yeah, it is, it is quite rare. When it comes to gems, Goblite, Phasmin and Noctrol are common, then Amarast uncommon and Zodian and Thys are rare. Before I continue to the best place to mine the Orvalis, you have to know that Zodian and Thys are the only two rare gems that can only be mined by the Sunpoint drill. Any other drill will not mine them at all. I will tell you more about this when we cover all the open worlds. But yes, the best place to get yourself lots of ores and gems are the caves. There is no good spot if you ask me, but my favorite cave is the cave west of Transit Depot. I have also seen that people also love to go to Deck 12 and respawn the deposits through the whole open world, but this has not worked for me, but I still thought it was a piece of information worth mentioning. If anyone knows any other places that are extremely good for mining, let me know down in the comments. But now let's go to the last open world, Cambion Drift, which can suck my ass. The dealer of rocks here is Othak. There are two types of veins there, ores which are orange and blue for gems, different to the other open world's blue version of gems. When it comes to ores, the common ones are Adramalium and Baphylite, Namalon is uncommon and Thomica is rare. I know a lot of people have problems with uh, farming Thomica, but in my experience I had the most problems with Namalon. Gems on the other hand are, and I will butcher most of these names, Dagonic, Hetzifron and Tiamatrite as uncommon, Necrothene as uncommon and Embolos and Xenocrast as rare. The best place to find any of these is definitely the Catabolic Gutter. The place is absolutely huge and, in my opinion, bearable to navigate, so I think that place is the best. But yeah, we have gone over the absolute basics. Now let's go over some more advanced stuff. I have mentioned numerous times before that you should avoid Nosum Cutters, which is not the best of things. For example, the focused Nosum Cutter, this is the second one you can get, can only mine materials that are common and uncommon. This means you will not be able to find any rare gems. Is that good or bad? In my opinion, it depends on how many resources you have. If you need the more common resources and don't want any rare ones at all, you can use the Focus Nosum Cutter. The only major downside I see with this one is that it does not show you the veins on your minimap, which can make it a bit harder, navigation-wise. But yeah, that is it about mining. To repeat, when you're done with it, you can go back to your vendor, Old Man Sumbat at Cetus, Smokefinger at Fortuna and Otak at Necrolisk and get the blueprints so you can refine your freshly mined resources. These blueprints are not that expensive standing wise and are infinite but can be extremely expensive resource wise since they do take massive amounts of resources from normal missions and the open world. Veterans out there may also want to use other ways of getting these resources. Of course, there are also other ways to get these mineable resources for every open world. I won't go too in-depth, but I will give you the basics for each one. Let's first start with the Plains of Eidolon. Plains of Eidolon have an enemy called the Thumper. There are four different varieties of them, Normal, Bull, Doma and Narmer, each one quite a bit harder. They spawn around during daytime, at random, by coming out of the ground. To kill them, you need to destroy the vents on their legs, four of them to be precise. To battle them, be sure to equip accurate weapons that you don't need to aim that much. A bonus would also be radiation and blast damage since the thumpers are weak to that. When you destroy the thumper, you will get a bunch of resources. The harder the thumper, the more you will get. But that is all about the flames. 
If you want a more in-depth guide, be sure to follow the link in the description to a video about thumpers. Okay now, let's continue to the Orvalis. One of the ways is to destroy crates. You will get quite a lot of common and some uncommon resources like this. The rare ones though, almost impossible. For all the mining and also fishing resources, you will have to fight a boss. Orvalis has an enemy called the Exploiter Orb. You can get to it by going to the back room and talking to the Solaris people there. The bad thing is, you need to be max rank with the Solaris United, which may hinder your progress quite a bit due to lack of dead bonds. You technically can ask other players for help, which may escort you there for free, so you can try that as well, but please do not beg. About the exploiter or boss fight, I won't go into too much detail. It is freaking hard if you play solo and is in my opinion one of the best ones in the game, like the best boss fights. That is my opinion though, so it is what it is. If you want an in-depth guide on how to destroy it, there's a link in the description. And now let's go to the last place we can get mining resources from, the Cambian Drift. Your best friend for the common resources here are crates scattered all around the place. I myself use its a lot and use its third ability, so it destroys every single crate around me, which gives me a lot of energy to cast it again and a bunch of resources. It is also good to farm nanospores and plastids this way. I have also seen people doing it with titania, but I think that build is quite expensive. Besides destroying crates and getting the more common and some uncommon resources, in the Cambian Drift you can also do something called the Requiem Towers, which are the best way to farming resources by far. If you have not yet completed the second dream quest or don't want me to spoil the story, be sure to skip this one because you will not be able to do it, but for everyone else, let's quickly go through the Requiem Towers. The Requiem Towers require you to play as the Operator with a good amp. The Requiem Towers look like this. When you come to one, you just shoot at the crystal in the middle with the Operator and kill the infested around it. There are 8 different signs that could be on top of the pillars. They all have different objectives you have to do to get the resources. But I normally just kill the infested and if the resources drop, I'm okay. If not, I guess no biggie, I'll go look for another tower. There is always multiple of them and they may not appear. If you want to know which signs are which, be sure to look at the video in the description about the Requiem Towers, everything explained in depth. Now we are actually done with the mining resources part, so if you are here to see only how to mine, you are done. I know there are many resources that give a lot of people headaches, such as Necrothene and Thomica, for which I can only say good luck. I know this was a longer video, but I really wanted to cover everything you have to know about mining. That is literally it. However, I don't know how the mining in the Duviri Paradox and the, well, the Duviri Realm will be, so we will see that in the future. I am quite excited. With this, I thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, join my Discord channel, subscribe and also have a very nice day. Bye guys!